best bites forever. Hi, I'm Chef Alicia, and today we're going to be making rosemary thyme and balsamic glazed ribs. I'm going to start off by mincing 10 cloves of garlic, and I just want to give you a quick lesson on the easiest way to mince garlic, and some awesome chef showed me this a long time ago in culinary school, so now I'm going to share it with you. Start off by going over your garlic with the back side of your knife. That's what I'm doing here, and as you can see, it's just kind of crushing it as I'm going along. Once you do that, move it all into a little pile and go over it a few times with the sharp side of your knife, and this just really makes the job a lot quicker. Then just move your little pile of minced garlic to the side. The next thing that we're going to need is some fresh rosemary, and here's another quick little lesson for you. The easiest way to get the rosemary leaves off of their stem is to start at the top of the stem and then pull down backwards, just like I'm doing here. Do this until you have around what you think is going to end up being two tablespoons when you chop it up, and don't worry about being super exact because this is just for our wet rub. It's not really a huge deal if you're a tiny bit off with this measurement. Then gather your rosemary up into a nice neat little pile and start chopping. Make sure that you're doing this with a sharp knife so that you're not bruising your little rosemary. And also, you only want to go over this herb one time, so make sure that when you do it, you're doing really teeny tiny little pieces and watch your fingers, of course. You don't want to chop over and over and over your little herbs because what ends up happening is you lose the oils out of the leaves and they end up all over your cutting board. So if you've ever had that green spot on your cutting board after you chopped herbs, now you know why. Put your garlic and rosemary together in a bowl and then add one tablespoon of fresh thyme or one teaspoon of dried thyme along with a quarter teaspoon of chili flakes or red pepper flakes, one tablespoon of kosher salt, two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of brown sugar, uh, either light or dark is fine, whichever you happen to have in the cabinet, and then a half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Once you have all of that in the bowl, go ahead and stir it up until you have it nice and combined and all of the ingredients are wet. And then go grab your ribs out of the refrigerator because we're ready to work with them. Ooh, there's my wet rub. Doesn't it look yummy? Okay, so here are my ribs and I'm just going to start off by cutting this rack in half. And the easiest way to do that is to find a bone. So you want to locate the bone here and then put your knife directly next to the bone and just cut straight down. So I have the concave side facing me, like the rib side, and then I put it just to the right of the bone and cut straight down. And as you can see, I didn't hit anything when I did it. And now we're going to take that beautiful wet rub that we just finished making, and we're going to rub both sides of the ribs with the wet rub. I suppose if you don't want to get your hands messy, you could try to do this with a spoon or a pastry brush or something like that, but I find the easiest way is just to do it with my hands. So go ahead and get your hands a little bit dirty today and play with your food. It's fun. After I get a really nice coat of my wet rub onto my ribs, I'm going to go ahead and get them ready to go into the refrigerator. You can wrap them up however you want with plastic wrap or Tupperware or whatever it is that you have, but I personally like to use gallon baggies because then I can just throw them away the next day and it's easy cleanup for me. Okay, so these need to go into the refrigerator for at least 12 hours and up to 24 hours. I put the baggies into the roasting pan that I'll be using tomorrow and then I cover that whole thing in aluminum foil so that my refrigerator doesn't end up smelling like the ribs. Here we are the next day after your ribs have been in the refrigerator for their 12 to 24 hours and we're going to go ahead and remove them from whatever you have them wrapped up in and add one cup of water to the bottom of the pan. You want the pan to have about a quarter of an inch of water on the bottom of it so if you have a really big pan you're going to need a little more water obviously and if you have a really tiny pan you can use a little bit less water. Cover the pan nice and tight with foil and then place the ribs into the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit and they're going to need to roast for about 1 hour and 45 minutes. This is what my ribs looked like when I pulled them out of the oven and they are incredibly tender which I'm going to show you here. This is always a sure sign of a yummy tasty tender rib. As you can see the bone just wants to pull right out. And this is also a good way to tell they're done because the meat is pulling away from the bones. Be careful when you handle them because it is really, really easy to tear their tiny little bones out. And remove your ribs from the pan and set them over to the side on a plate or a pan or something like that. And then we're going to put the juice into a pot, which you should strain your juice. I didn't do it here, but I did go back and do it off of camera. So make sure that you strain your juice and then skim the fat off of the top. 
take your time skimming the fat because you're going to get a better overall result in the end if you do this right, okay? And once you get all of the fat skimmed off of the top, you're going to have something that looks more like this. And then add one cup of balsamic vinegar into your pot along with one half cup of brown sugar. And again, this can be a light brown or a dark brown, it doesn't matter. And then stir that all up until the sugar is dissolved. Take it over to your stove and bring the liquid to a boil. Um, I didn't do this on high heat, I did it on more like a medium high because it boils over pretty easily even though there isn't very much liquid in the pan. The other thing is, be sure to stir it every few minutes and scrape the bottom and the sides with your spatula. If you have a rubber spatula, it makes this a lot better and that helps it to keep from burning to the bottom. You'll want to reduce this down to about one, maybe one and a half cups. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes and you're looking more for the consistency. So you want it to coat your spatula. The amount you end up with is kind of depending on the amount that you started off with. But as long as it's thick enough to glaze your ribs with where it doesn't just pour straight off and it's not too thick where you can't spread it with your pastry brush, then you should be just fine. And just keep in mind that it thickens as it cools. Here you can see me glazing my ribs and just make sure that you get both sides and I also like to do the little bone tips just because I think it looks prettier. And when you have them nice and coated, you're going to place them three to four inches under the broiler for one or two minutes. You can also do this next step on the grill if you want to, but either way, make sure that you watch them because they burn really, really easily. This is what they're going to look like when they come out from under the broiler or off of the grill. And you can put another coat of glaze if you want them to be really pretty and shiny, but I actually didn't put another glaze on these. This is just what they look like. And I just want to show you one more time just how tender these ribs actually are. As you can see, I can just grab right a hold of them and pull them apart and that bone just comes right out. Here it goes. Oh yeah, that's going to be absolutely delicious. And see, that's how we do it. Happy cooking, everyone. Oh yeah. Best bites for ever dot com.